yes, it's Ladies Fright. We tell spooky stories and try to figure out what about them makes them so scary. Using personal anecdotes, psychology, and sociology, Lauren, Maggie, and Jackie dive into urban legends, ghost stories, and other tales that give us a good fright. Because this is Ladies Fright. Oh, what a fright. Find us wherever you listen to podcasts. On this episode of Common Mystics, we find ourselves confronting a gruesome crime spree from the early 1870s, but our psychic sense is that the truth is even more disturbing. I'm Jennifer James. I'm Jill Stanley. We're psychics. We're sisters. We are Common Mystics. We find extraordinary stories in ordinary places, and we have a story for you out of Labette County, Kansas. Before we get into this crazy tale, we have some housekeeping. Ooh. Jennifer, start. (laughs) Okay. So we recently found out that that we are number 64 in Apple's category of spirituality and religion in the country of India. Yay! Yay! Thank you, India. Oh my gosh, it's such Thank an honor. Thank you so much. It really is. I'm not even kidding. There's a lot of spirituality in India. I know. It makes me feel like they recognize us mm. as being spiritual too. I know. Thank you so much, you guys. I'm surprised we ranked anywhere for <laughs> anything. <laughs> Do you think we're taking this too seriously? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> but for real, it's an honor. It is. So thank you, India. It really is. So thank you, India. And you other countries, tell your friends about us. I know. Come on, USA. Really? <laughs> Go ahead. I mean, come on. What's the second give thing? Us like, give us some kind of ranking. Um, so the second thing is our friend Carrie's Facebook page Ooh. and her her business. Yes, Juniper Moon Holistic Healing. She's a tarot card reader, but she also is able to get in touch with your guides and angels that help you along your spiritual path in this life. And I'm really interested, Jen, in doing the readings we told her we were going to do because honestly, I can't do that for myself. Yeah. I'm always just talking to my grandma. That sounds uh amazing i definitely am going to book a reading with her i know how do we contact her find her on facebook juniper moon holistic healing all right her name's carrie and she's wonderful and i hope you guys enjoy her as much as we do oh my gosh i can't wait so should we get right into it (laughs) jennifer what this is bonkers this is bonkers okay we were on our common mrs road trip first time ever we were going to topeka we were in wichita when we set our intention and we were getting some full-on evil serial killer crazy ass vibes and jennifer was like hell to the no we are not doing that because there's a famous nasty serial killer (laughs) from wichita that i don't even want to say his name i don't even want to say his acronym his nasty name But I'm just saying that is literally what I was picking up. And I didn't know it until Jennifer did a quick search after her date with James Beckworth. (laughs) And she like completely was like, no, we're not doing this story. So take it from there. We set the intention. Right. So after my hot date. Tell us what we were feeling in the car. We set set the intention to ask the spirits to lead us to a verifiable story that we knew nothing about, but most importantly, to give voice to the voiceless. That's right. So the hits that I was picking up on, like I said, was like evil, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. bodies being discarded in a well, serial killer stabbing, throat slitting. Like it it was like intense. And Jen, every time I was like telling her what I was thinking, she was like in a smile (laughs) off in her own world playing with her hair. And I'm like, hey, I was like, can you tell James? like, Jill, (laughs) can't you see that I'm in the middle of something right now? I was like, just get his digits and let's move on. (laughs) I'm totally working this right now. Could you just be like, you'll meditate on that later. Let's move forward. (laughs) No, seriously. I was getting the feeling like I wanted to go east. I wanted to go east. And you know, I'm usually the navigator and you were like, no, Jen, we're not going east. And I was like, but yeah. So you were feeling, okay, in all fairness, let's be honest. We had to be in Topeka that evening, mm-hmm. and we stopped in Wichita, and we were supposed to be working, and instead we went shopping for swimsuits well, cover Well, we were supposed to be working on the podcast. We weren't, like, on our day jobs. 
No, no, right, 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 right. I consider no, this work. No, yeah, absolutely. And we were going to meet our family, and we knew that we forgot our bathing suit cover ups. There was going to be hotel pools, and we needed like this was a priority. And a whole lot of thighs, <laughs> thighs, hotel but, pools, and a whole lot of thighs. Out. Yeah, we needed <laughs> Pizza Hut. We've been eating Pizza Hut for a week. You mean Taco Bell? Yeah, you did a whole riff on their double meat. So here you go. <laughs> this is the consequence of double meat. <laughs> So, yes, so, it was a priority to go to Marshall's, TJ Maxx, and look for some big-ass cover-ups so, <laughs> so that we would be presentable to family that we, like, see once every five years. Yeah, and who are brutally honest. And we weren't – we're not feeling that. Anyway, Just so saying. go ahead. So you actually were telling me you were feeling a cult feeling. That's true. And you were getting pulled to the east. Do you remember that? And also, I was, for some reason, really, really focused on the Osage Trail. Now, I know we did a whole podcast on the Osage murders, right? But this is before we did any real research on what we were picking up on. No, totally. So you... It was the so trail. your association, right. It was the trail. You were thinking, yes, mm-hmm. the great Osage. You were thinking, oh, this may be from the other story. But you were like, but this trail, we need to go on. And again... We ran out of time. Yeah. It was a hard stop, and we had to go to Topeka. So there was absolutely no way I can follow your trail east mm-hmm. and do that. That, sh- that We just didn't have the time. Right. Exactly. And then, like I said, we discussed the nasty serial killer from Wichita, which is not going to be brought up again, but you were you totally shut me down, even though I was getting strong serial killer vibes. Right. I knew that was not our story. I was not going to talk about that. I just instinctively knew that's we're not that's not our story. Right. So what did we find? Well, we did a little bit of research on Labette County, Kansas. Is that where were we in Labette County when we were driving through Jill or no? We were near okay. it. We were driving around okay. it. We were literally driving like almost like a half circle around okay. it. Okay. So after the Civil War, the U.S. government moved the Osage people from their lands in eastern Kansas to another place. Which was – turned out to be Osage County in Oklahoma. Exactly. Now, according to to Legends of America, which is a website, right, Jill? That's okay. correct. In 1870, there were five families of quote-unquote spiritualists who settled in western Labette County along the Great Osage Trail. The Great Osage Trail was actually a a trail that was used to herd buffalo. And as the country expanded out west, white settlers began to use the trail to commute between Kansas City and Fort Smith, Kansas. So they moved the Osage people, but they still continued to use their trail. Right. Right. And so right along this trail, there were five families of spiritualists. And one of these families is known as the Benders. They were creepy, Jill. They're creepy. (laughs) Jennifer, I don't understand why you went right there with it. We don't know them yet. Tell me a little bit about them. I think I know them. And they remind (laughs) me of, should I I say it here? Yeah, do you know it? Yeah, they remind me of the Sawyer family of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. Okay, okay. I think you're being a little harsh. I, 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 I we'll let find the out. listeners decide. <laughs> let the listeners decide. Okay, so the Benders, and who were the Benders? Well, there was John Bender Sr., his wife Elmira, son John Jr., and daughter Kate. Those were the Benders. Now, the family lived on 160 acres. They built a one room framed cabin a barn, a corral, and they dug a well. Mm -hmm. Now, inside their wooden cabin, the area was partitioned with a large canvas, large sheet of canvas that they hung from the ceiling. And the the canvas, just to give you a visual, like if you can think of like the Old West wagons, that canvas is like the white top of the wagons, that what the the wagons are covered with. Yeah, cool. So this is kind Mm -hmm. of... um, inventive they're they're making this is before ikea you know they can't just buy a divider (laughs) so i mean and to be fair today we can't just buy a divider we have to buy the divider parts with the divider hardware (laughs) that's right i do love ikea though oh my gosh it's the best (laughs) ikea's the best okay so inside they they partitioned it off with this large 
canvas and created different living quarters. So they would live in the back behind this big canvas and there was an inn and a store in the front. So they lived in the back and then they had travelers stay for the night and they would sell items in the front of their store. Right. And so there was this crude sign that hung above their front door that said groceries. And so they're on this major trail, Jill. So this would attract people who needed, who were travelers, who needed a place to stay or who need provisions. Location is everything. Location, location, location. Right. So they had a thriving little inn and business going on, Jill. Mm -hmm. They sold liquor, groceries, tobacco. Mm. meats, oh, all kinds of things. They sold meals, so they were kind of like a restaurant, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the main thing was, and this was was major, they provided a quote-unquote safe place for people to spend the night. Well, sure, sure. So why do we know about them? (laughs) What's the deal? There's five families we know about. Hold on, hold on. I just looked down on the outline, and I see that you said (laughs) they provided entertainment for travelers. So I just, let's just stop. That's true. I just (laughs) Let's just stop Jennifer, here. Stop it. What do you, what sort of entertainment are you referencing here, Jill? Okay. So Kate, daughter Kate, yes. and we're gonna get into this later oh, in the oh, outline. I'm sorry. But first jump on sorry, sorry. Daughter Kate and um, Ma are spiritualists and they communicate with the dead, whether it be um, on one on one mediumships or in a seance setting. And so they would provide that kind of entertainment, whether it be hypnotizing or going into a trance to connect with people on the other side. So they're not just a grocer, an inn, and no, they're, they're also, also they're a, a, a one stop medium shop. <laughs> that's right that's okay. right okay okay yeah interesting yes interesting very entrepreneurial so here's why we're talking about it jill yeah why do we know about right that? right right so during 1871 and 1872 in addition to the normal settler traffic there were multiple parties that traveled the great osage trail making inquiries about missing people People who were missing who had just been through that area. Ah, so traffic picked up because people were looking for other people that never made it to their destination is what you're saying. It appeared so, yes. Okay, but that, okay, just hear me out again. Mm. It's not unusual for travelers along these trails, even well-documented trails, to have some unfortunate event happen upon them that may cause their arrival time to be delayed or even possible death. That's true. Have you ever played the Oregon Trail? No, but I I know you you did. Tell me about it. Oh, it's so – oh, my God. It's it's designed – to make you die, whether it be from, like, syphilis or, oh. like, your ox is drowning and, like, you never make it to Oregon. The whole point of it is that life sucks on the trail and you're never going to make it and you're going to die of some horrible disease if your ox doesn't drown you. Okay. Okay. For sure. But there was, like, a cluster here. There's a cluster of disappearances right around this inn, this this part of the trail right there. People are missing. So it's not just like... Okay, so what are you saying? I'm saying that this is messed up. Like, this family is messed up, and there's some shit going down. So let's get into it. And you already compared them to the the Sawyer family. So tell me why you feel that way about them. Because I kind of feel like you're being a little bigoted. Are you serious? I feel you're kind of Judgy McJudgerson. Tell me why you feel this way. Okay. So like I said, there were four of them, right? Ma, Pa, John Jr., and Kate. Mm -hmm. Apparently, they were German immigrants. Pa was said to be – his first name was said to be John or Johannes. He is described as being about 60 years old, about six feet tall. So he was a big man. Like six feet tall is tall. Jill in eighteen seventy. I know why are you Jill being so you rude today. Are six feet You're just tall. judging everybody. Everyone. Jill is six feet tall. Oh. She is a six feet tall, six foot tall <laughs> woman. <laughs> but this is like the two thousands. In eighteen seventy, if you were six feet tall, you were a big guy. All right. No offense, Jill. 
but you are a big man for 1870. <laughs> okay. It, it was said he was described as a giant. No offense. Don't look at me like that. With cold, It's just getting meaner and meaner. Cold, piercing eyes and bushy facial hair that covered his mm. reddish complexion. People said he looked wild. Yeah. Okay. Are you getting that Texas chainsaw feel? I don't like – Well – Let's keep going. You couldn't tell. Let's keep you going. You couldn't tell any of the Sawyer's complexion because they wore other people's skin. <laughs> so you don't know what you're talking okay, about. Okay. So Ma, Ma Bender – was a heavy set woman. Ooh, that's my girl. <laughs> Talk to me. She was close to her husband's age. And here's the thing neighbors who knew her were unsettled by her presence. Ooh. They felt chilled by her. And they, na- they nicknamed her a she devil. Oh. Now, It was rumored that Ma was a psychic medium who is talented in connecting with the dead, but also did herb and root magic and made spells and charms. Hmm. I don't see anything wrong with this. I don't see anything wrong with that with that description. However, there's more. Are you ready for John Jr.? Tell. (laughs) I don't think I'm ever gonna be ready for John Jr. Yes, Jennifer. Tell me about John Jr. John Jr. left an, another kind of unsettling impression on people. He was tall and slender. He spoke broken English. Oh, by the way, his parents were generally known to not speak English. So they would like mm. grunt and speak another language. John Jr. apparently could speak English better than his parents, but his communication was marked by incessant, aimless laughter. Uh huh. Uh huh. That is so. He that is would legit. Creepy. He would just be walking around laughing to himself. Oh my god! <laughs> people believe that he was a quote unquote half wit. Other people thought he was like crazed, and were like afraid of him. Yeah, I think both of those are probably fair. All right. A little Texas, bit of both. Texas Chainsaw. There wasn't a laugher in the Sawyer family. Jill. There wasn't. Jill. There wasn't a laughter. Were they crazed halfwits? Mm, that's fair. Okay. That's fair. that's fair. Lastly, let's talk about Kate. <laughs> she, too, was notable in the area, Jill, for her abilities. Abilities as a medium and herbalist, just like Ma. Apparently, Jill, she was beautiful and alluring. She was petite with auburn hair. Bitch. <laughs> this is this is important. She was the most socially well adjusted. So like people didn't look at her and run. They didn't leave her. <laughs> That's they, they such a low bar. <laughs> right? They didn't find her like unsettling or or scary and like crazy. Um, but she was, she used her charismatic charms to give lectures on topics such as free love and spiritualism. And she conducted seances to connect people with their loved ones who had been dearly departed. However, not everybody, not everybody liked her or was charmed by her despite her magneticism and, and, and charms. Um, there were people in the town, well, I call it town. It really wasn't a town. There were people in the settlement mm-hmm. who said that she was demonic and, and who said that she should not be trusted. Well, these people found, sound like a hoot and a holler. I got to tell you. <laughs> oh, my God. Honestly. Okay. Just stop. I have a question. Yeah. Yeah, I really mean this. So tell me, like, be, you know, be objective. Throughout history, there have been explicit biases towards spiritualists and mediumships and psychics and all that, right? Mediums. Yeah, mediums. Like, for sure, right? Mm, so that's true. So we ourselves are kind of in the closet to, like, our professionals and our colleagues that that's we true. have to deal with, right? That's true. So 
what if these people were just being a bunch of dicks? Not the benders, but like the people of the settlement. What if they were being like just rude to the benders because they were different, like more eccentric, right? Like the okay. way people treated the monsters on the TV show in the 60s. <laughs> Think so about the it. monsters looked like freaks, but they were really just nice, normal people. Right. but They weren't murderers. But we don't know that these people murdered anybody yet. We just have people missing. Is it the laughing boy? It, I think it's the evidence. I think it's the stuff they found <laughs> no, on their land. So yet. can we get there, Jill? <laughs> Jennifer, we're bringing people along. <laughs> okay. All right. So to say that uh, John Jr. having aimless fits of laughter is odd is an understatement. <laughs> Okay, for real, I would have addressed it with Kate. I would be like, Kate, what about your brother, bro? <laughs> it's like, why? Why is that happening? <laughs> That's true. Like, for sure. I wouldn't sit next to him in class. No, no, no. <laughs> but honestly, before you found any of the bodies on the land, wouldn't you feel like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you don't, well, the, like, the, wouldn't you? Yeah, let's not even go there. Because there's, I mean, there's evidence, Jill. There's evidence. <laughs> okay. I don't want to tiptoe around this. Okay. These so people the are crazy. People. <laughs> They're crazy. <laughs> okay. So let's get to the bodies that you speak of. The missing people. Yeah. Tell me about them. Because <laughs> fuck this outline. <laughs> because we're not using it. Let's just cut to the chase, man. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Who's missing? This is actually really sad. This, this part makes me really sad. Okay. So Murderpedia. Murderpedia explains that it was the winter of 1872, and a man named George Longcore was was traveling with his infant daughter, Marianne. She was just a baby. They left Independence, Kansas, to resettle in Iowa, and they were never seen again. They were on this trail, Jill. They were on this trail. In the spring of 1873, Longcore's former neighbor, Dr. York, went looking for them. And he questioned the different homesteaders along the trail, trying to find what happened to George Longcore and little Marianne. That's a really good friend. Mm-hmm, totally. So Dr. York goes and he, star- he, he starts following the trail and asking the different homesteaders if they had seen George Longcore and his infant daughter. But he never returned home. Mm, 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 mm. Now, Dr. York happened to have two brothers, and one of them was a senator in the state of Kansas. He knew his brother's travel plans, and when he failed to return home, he began an all-out search for his brother, Dr. York. That's really sweet. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, and it was totally organized. I mean, this guy had money. He had means. It was like an organized search. So they had some 50 men questioning travelers along the trail and visiting all of these homesteads along the way. Mm Mm-hmm. Apparently, on March 28th, 1873, Colonel York, the brother of Dr. York, who's, who's led this search for him, Colonel York arrived at the Benders Inn with another man, Mr. Johnson. And he talked to them and he said, hey, I'm looking for my brother. His name is Dr. York. He went missing. And he asked the Benders if they had seen him. And the Benders admitted that Dr. York did stay with them. And then said, oh, maybe he ran into some trouble with the Indians. Can you just stop Mm. for a second? I know that a lot of Quentin Tarantino's film work doesn't hold up under today's scrutiny, but this scene with Colonel York going to the Bender Inn and, like, having laughing John Jr. and, like, the whole scene needs to be done by... Yes, I feel like it would be the funniest dialogue. Like, like um, hey, what's wrong with him? <laughs> like... Quentin Tarantino really needs to look at this as an option, at least for this scene, just for my amusement. I think you should send an email to his people. Right. Strongly worded. So they were like, oh, yeah, maybe the Indians got him. I know. And Colonel York agreed. He's like, yeah, maybe. And he stayed for dinner. 
Wow. Yeah. So he keeps going on his investigation with his 50 men. He's talking to people in the area. Well, he finds out through talking to to the neighbors that um, someone saw a woman fleeing from the inn after being threatened with knives by Ma. So in case you were able just to, like, explain John Jr. away, um, maybe have a second look at them because Ma chases people with knives. There you go. There you go. So Colonel York goes back to the inn, confronts Ma, and (laughs) Ma, like, loses her shit. Like, she goes into this rage and accuses the woman the one who ran, the one whom Mm -hmm. she chased with knives out of her house, (laughs) accuses this woman of being a witch, a witch who cursed her coffee, no less. And then honestly, though, (laughs) this man comes into her inn, accusing her of, she she doesn't know her at all. Jill. That is just a word on the street. Again, if we're going to accuse them, we need some evidence. Jill. We can't just be like, they look crazy. The kid won't stop laughing. We need evidence. I find it more than a little troubling that in this story, you're (laughs) identifying with the benders. (laughs) Just saying. They are. We have a lot in common. I'm just, oh. We're both t- Me and Pa are very tall. <laughs> you and Ma are meaty. I- <laughs> <laughs> you are so fucked up. And there's the laughing. So and there's the laughing. <laughs> okay. All right. So then she, she orders York and his men out of her house. You know, she's like, get the hell out. Sure. Now, what does Kate do? I like this part. (laughs) This is my girl right here. Kate, what you do? (laughs) Honestly, Jill. Before York leaves, it's funny. Kate's like, hey. (laughs) Give me that James Beckwith voice. (laughs) Mm -hmm. After Ma cools down a bit, you should come back on Friday night. And I'll use my clairvoyant ooh. abilities to help you find your brother. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Mama, mm-hmm. young Kate. Mm-hmm. So she makes that proposition, but they, they don't ever go back. He doesn't meet her on Friday night to experience her quote-unquote oh, clairvoyant abilities. Mm. He should have dropped her a note, though, just explaining that it wasn't going to work well, out. Well, maybe he did. He but the point brother. is, after this encounter, he knew that the Benders had something to do with his brother's his brother's disappearance he knew after after all this because <laughs> they weren't really subtle but honestly he's still on my side because he's like instead of all gun ho like burning them at the stake he's like we need evidence that's true that is so very true saying that right right mm. he insisted mm-hmm. in fact that evidence be found but he was on it okay now around this time neighboring communities began to make accusations that the Osage people, the Osage, were responsible for the disappearances. I mean, honestly. Do you believe this? Oh, Jesus. To add insult to injury, they move them off their land, Mm. and now they're like, oh, they're the ones responsible. Okay. There was actually a meeting. There was like a town meeting, and they, they met at Osage Township. In the Harmony Grove Schoolhouse. And 75 local people, Mm -hmm. including Colonel York and John Bender Sr. and John Bender Jr. So Pa and Laffity Laugh are both there accusing the Osage of these disappearances. I just had a flash of me sitting next to Dad at church. And if I, like, were to start laughing, I would get my ass beat. I don't understand why John, Pa, would bring Laffity Laugh to the town meeting. Like, he's going to, like, honestly. Wow. They had a meeting. They accused the Osage. But people were like, all right, we are going to search every homestead in this area, which would include the Bender's homestead. Exactly. Good. Okay. So three days later. There's a lot of properties that need to be searched. And the properties are large. Mm, the properties are large. They need to be searched. And there's there was bad weather, to be honest. So mm, Okay. So there was a hold up there. Yeah, exactly. Well, they should have started with the Bender property because three days Jennifer, later, I'm not everyone Jill, is like you. 
Three days later, Judgy this, McJudgerson, this guy Billy Toll, judge a lot. Mick Toll <laughs> is driving his cattle past the Bender property, and he notices, mm-hmm. "Hey, nobody's home at the inn. It's abandoned." And not only is it abandoned, mm. and this is, I think, the worst crime of all: their farm animals were unfed. That's not right. She really does believe that. She really does believe Billy that. She like told me. She was like reading horrible things that happened to people. And then she's like, but the animals. But the so animals. Like, okay. So Billy Continue. Toll reported that he reported this to the local governance. And be, and here's where the inclement weather comes in. Because the weather was bad, it was like several days before people could get out there and like investigate and see, all right, so where are they? What's going on? Jill, here's your evidence. They start probing the ground around the cabin, they find disturbed soil in the vegetable garden and the orchard, and mm. there they find Dr. York's body. He was buried face down with his feet barely below the surface. See, now I feel it's appropriate for you to talk shit. Like, all before I think, like, like you might have gotten a feeling, but you didn't have an evidence, and I think, like, now it's appropriate. Like, yeah, now no, they're murderers. I get it. That laughing wasn't right. <laughs> that laughing wasn't right. Go on. <clears throat> Thank you, Jill. I'm feeling you now. I'm feeling you. All right. They continued searching until after midnight, and they found another nine suspected grave sites. Oh, God. Another eight bodies were found in seven of the nine suspected graves. And there was a body found in the well, along with a number of body parts. Oh, my God. All of the bodies found had had their heads bashed in with a hammer and their throats cut. Mm. And it was reported in the newspapers that all had been, quote unquote, indecently mutilated. Jesus. Which makes me wonder, what would have been like a decent mutilation? (laughs) I don't know. It's just a question. Do you really want me to answer that? No. No. The part of the anatomy. <gasps> Chill. Yeah. That's what they mean, Jen. I don't want to go there. Well, you went there. I was just my, I'm just sitting here reading the outline. The body of a young girl was found with no injury sufficient to cause death. And it was speculated that she had been strangled or buried alive. Oh, poor baby. That was little Marianne, maybe. So here is the list of victims. And I only bring it up. And I know this is boring because we're basically just reading a list of names. But in reality, this story really is about them because that's a horrible way to die. And we didn't even get into the details. So I'm just going to name off the names of the people we know were found to be murdered and and buried on that property. There was a Benjamin M. Brown. There was a John Boyle. Jack Boyley. Alfonso Scans, mm-hmm. G.W. Launcher, and his daughter, his young daughter, Mary Launcher, W.F. McGrowdy, H.F. McKenzie, and then a man just known to be small man, which, again, I find very offensive because if I were found, they would be like large woman, big feet, bad knees, <laughs> unidentified woman. And a man named Jones that apparently they identified as someone from Howard County, but they couldn't say for sure. Oh my God. But these, yeah, so these people aren't like the Munsters at all. They are more like the Sawyers, Jen. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Although you jumped the gun on it. I know, but I just can't play along like that. Like these people are <sighs> bad news. I couldn't even pretend they weren't. Yeah. Well, you know what? I just hope that people... I like that in the time, because they were spiritualist and kind of like not integrated, like like they were like eccentrics in society, that it wasn't just because they were weird or did things that other people didn't find like normal. You know what I mean? They give mediums and spiritualists a bad name. I agree with that. And honestly... They probably weren't – they just use that as a guise to be a part of this community or this settlement to be along the trail is really what they did. 
I don't think they had any special power. I think they used that to gain notoriety, to get people interested in their inn along the trail. And so I'm just hoping that people don't judge mediums and spiritualists like that. Just all I'm saying. All I'm saying. I think they said that they were mediums and spiritualists and were into witchcraft to keep people away, to keep people afraid of them. Because if really? you, yes, because if you have a reputation for being a witch, you're not going to cross that person. If you believe that that old lady is really a witch, then I think you're going to like give her, give her her space and don't mess with I her. I think both, I think both things are true because I think although a lot of people were afraid of Ma, Kate was putting ads in the newspaper. That's true. Trying to get people to come That's to the true. inn. That's That is definitely true. So I think true. both things can be true. Point taken. I agree. Okay. So how did they get away with this? How did they do it? Well, I think this this is really the question. So as you pointed out many times, these people are weird, not just because the mediumship and the spiritualism. These people are like legitimate weird. We have laughing guy. We have scary <laughs> wild paw. We have crazy ass ma. Like, <laughs> it's just freaking people out with her gaze, right? Mm. Why would people stop there? Mm. How did people actually stay there? Mm-hmm. Can you explain how they did it? Like, what the hell? Because I'm telling you right now, as soon as I see John Jr., I'm leaving. No kidding. No kidding. Right well, now. Here's the thing. Not everybody did stay. Some people did run and they escaped. And that's how the authorities at the time were able to put the pieces together and learn how the benders were killing people. And, and here's what they did. There's a Mental Floss article that describes it. And it says... It's called Bloody Benders, America's First Serial Killers, which I don't know if that's true, but that's the title of it. So we're just going to go with it. Exactly. It says investigators, investigators later pieced together the group's modus operandi. It's believed that guests at the inn were urged to sit against the separating curtain. Remember that canvas that I was talking to you about? Right. So guests were urged to sit there by that curtain. And while they were dining... They would be hit on the head with a hammer from behind the curtain. And then their body was dropped into a trap door beneath them into the cellar where one of the benders slit their throat before stripping the body of its valuables. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's how they did it. So according to another source, Justice Story... The Bloody Benders, the family who kills together stays together. Authorities believe that the Benders had created an assembly line of murder. Well, that's oh. organized. And that really appeals to my sense of <laughs> structure. <Efficiency>. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Authorities believed that they created an assembly line of murder. Kate would beguile the victims, coaxing them to close their eyes so that she could hypnotize them. And then old man Bender, Pa, would crush their skulls with a sledgehammer. Jesus. And then they'd toss them in the cellar. Mm. And then wait for the right time to bury them in the garden. Probably at night, right? There was a survivor. His name was Mr. Wetzel. God bless you, Mr. Wetzel, because my God, I would have shit my pants so bad. Mr. Wetzel recalled a time when he had been at the end and he was like, no, I don't want to sit by the curtain. (laughs) (laughs) And by the way, the curtain had blood stains on it. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Way to be perceptive, Mr. Wetzel. PSA. Jen, do the PSA. Here is the PSA. If someone is urging you to sit next to a (laughs) bloody curtain, you say no and you run. Honestly, for real, like all joking aside, we are still animals and mammals. And the best metaphor I can give you or analogy to this situation is that a squirrel in the woods hears a noise, feels uneasy, and just books out of there. It doesn't say sorry. It doesn't say, oh, I hope I'm not offending you. It just gets the hell out. If you're in a situation, whether there's a blood stain curtain or not, and you feel uneasy, just get the hell out. Don't apologize. Don't be like, oh, this is rude of me. Just get the hell out. Be the squirrel. Be the squirrel. Save your life. 
That's an excellent point. You need to follow your gut for sure. And we're going to do a bonus on your experience with the West Side Rapist. Shut up. That Jennifer, no, we're not. That's exciting. Reminded. I know. I know. Oh, all right. All right. So okay, bonus. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. Back to the story. Okay. So Mr. Wetzel refused Oh, to by sit. the way. Oh. Spoiler alert. I am not the West Side Rapist. Please continue. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't me. Nice. Go on. I'm glad you cleared that up. When he refused to sit by the blood-stained canvas, Ma got angry and she yelled abuse. She like lost her shit basically. And <laughs> and then and then just as she's losing her shit, one of the male benders, we don't know if it was Pa or Laughing John, jumped out from behind the curtain and Mr. Wetzel just ran out of there. Uh-uh. 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 Yeah. And there was another man called William Pickering who told almost an identical story. So you have two of these witnesses independent of each other talking about how they did it. And so that's how the authorities found out. That is worst case scenario. Think about it. Traumatizing oh, for Jesus Christ. sure. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Because the, where are they running to? You're on like a settlement. You're the on a 165 like- acre homestead. Yes. You are running through like open fields. Oh shit! You're getting me oh, scared. Oh god! Stop, I know it's stop. freaking frightening. If they wanted to, oh. if they were, I don't know, if they were like physically inclined to, they could have like ran after you. Anyway, anyway, another PSA: cardio, <laughs> cardio. Do your cardio in case you have to run from Laffy Guy <laughs> or murderous Ma and Pa. Oh, okay. So Jennifer. Yes. What did the investigators say was the motive to these murders? Like, what is going on? Why were they doing this? Honestly, they believed that they wanted the money and the goods off of these people. The The mm. family was stealing stuff. They were stealing money, livestock, any valuables from these victims. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. So, mm-hmm. so you said that their farm was abandoned. Yeah. What happened to them? Oh, my gosh. Where are the benders? This is the most upsetting part of all. Okay, so there was a huge effort to find them. Like, when you say huge effort, you mean, like, all kinds of people were being suspected, questioned, detained. Mm -hmm. The authorities found a guy that was said to be friends with, like, John Bender, and they would hang him until he passed out, take him down, question him, and when he wouldn't answer questions, they would hang him again. They did that, like, three times. Yeah, that's they not... They basically were torturing people. They absolutely were. That's not right. I'm going to go on the record and say that that's not right. <laughs> you should not torture people. You took a sensible turn in this episode. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> right. The governor issued a $2,000 reward. No one mm. was ever found, Jill. Not a one. No one was ever found. Were there any leads? Well, detectives followed wagon tracks and discovered the Bender's wagon. It was abandoned with a starving team of horses. No. Oh, God. This, I know, that's the saddest thing. Poor babies. Okay. And they found the wagon... Um, outside of Thayer, Kansas, about 12 miles north of the inn. And it was confirmed that in Thayer, the family bought tickets, bought Mm. railroad tickets uh, for Humboldt, Kansas. And then apparently, they think, at Chanute, Kansas, is where John Jr. and Kate left the train and caught another train to Texas. Wow. So they were basically taking the trains to different parts, and they separated at some point. Yeah, and then from there, it's believed that they traveled, and by they, we don't really know, but it's possible that the entire pack or the entire band met up in the border region between Texas and New Mexico, but it was a really unsafe place to go, and so lawmen who followed outlaws into that area often never returned, and so once they could get to this kind of no-man's land, It was just too dangerous for the lawmen to chase them there. Wow. Were there any other notable means in which the benders were said to have escaped? You mean theories? Yes. Give me some notable theories out there. Some thought that they fled to Mexico. Mm Mm-hmm. I can see that. Is this? You wrote this outline. I don't believe this one. 
This is so, I'm not kidding. That they escaped like the Wizard of Oz in a hot air balloon. <laughs> You're an asshole. I put that in. They escaped Oz style like the Wizard of Oz in a hot air balloon. Really? That is a real theory. I'm not kidding you. When were hot air balloons invented? I okay. I'm looking right, right now because no, I'm, I'm not betting you. I believe you. I but think you already owe me like five thousand dollars for bats like balloons this. Balloons invented. Invented. Okay, you're right. 1783 was the earliest hot air balloon. That's when it was invented. Still though, that shit wasn't safe. That couldn't have been saved. <laughs> it's not safe now. It, I know, right? And there were still other theories that they had been shot while in pursuit. But if that's true, then someone would have claimed the reward, and nobody ever did. Hell to the yeah, $2,000 today I'd be claiming that reward. Right. I mean, nobody knows what happened to them, and there are all these stories and legends that have come out of this incredible, incredible story. Okay, so indulge me for a minute. Mm. Let's talk about our psychic impressions about the legend itself. Mm. I want to be honest. You really did most of the research, and I know you have some really strong psychic impressions, and I think they jive with me, but I, th- I want you to talk about it because this, really, this is really you. I don't think these people were related at all. Are you serious? I swear to God. You I think, don't think like these not a one four of them. freaks just happened to find each other? I think that they were involved in a larger community, like a syndicate of crime. Because even if these people were just killing and getting rid of them, there would have to be other criminals taking the goods that they got, that they stole from these victims, right? Mm. If some of these victims had horses, mules, wagons, they would have to get rid of them, Mm. right? Who? It's not going to be the other four families on the, like in the spiritualist communities. And how plausible is it that they all were able to escape unless there was a larger group that they were able to absorb into mm. and kind of act like a chameleon, right? Hmm. So that's why I think that they weren't related, that they're a part of a larger ring of crime, hmm. whether officially or not. Like, I'm not saying they were like, you know, organized mm. like it wasn't like the mafia, but yeah. you get what I'm saying. Interesting. Yeah. But definitely, I also feel like they also enjoyed this work. Mm, I feel that too. They were getting off on it. I feel that too. It wasn't just about the money. They were enjoying scaring mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. Kate was enjoyed bringing them in, Mm -hmm. getting them fooled. Ma was enjoyed throwing her weight around. John was happy just laughing. Let's Mm -hmm. be honest. John Jr., he, he was all in with the laughter. But Pa... He was bashing brains and slitting throats, and he liked it. It's really upsetting. And to be honest, I think that they kept John Jr. around just for the muscle because he was like lean, young, and he can move a body. He can dig a ditch. Mm. Like, let's be honest. I also think that they were doing this for years in different ways, right? I think they came together with this assembly line of murder plan that they were able to band together to get it done. But I think they might have done this alone or in different ways with different other people or parties. Hmm. That's, what, that's what I think. And what do you think happened to them? Where, where do you think they're where? What do you think of their whereabouts after the fact? Where did they go? I think they split up. And I think that they were able to, like I say, um, to kind of get lost in different areas of the country and be absorbed into different communities and different scams, to be honest. Because they were just scammers. It must have been so easy back then just to like change your identity, take a new name, show up somewhere new. People were traveling all, all, mm-hmm. all the time for legit reasons, you know, traveling out west for a new life. Right. Mm-hmm. Interesting, Jill. I, I like your theory. I think it does ring true to me. Thank you. But tell me, who do you think? Thank you. Okay, so who is the voiceless? Do you think it's the obvious answer that it's the victims of this this bender group? Honestly, I think it's more than that. The victims like legitimately died in the most horrible, frightening way possible, and I don't want to downplay that, but. When the officials got to the Bender farm and they were going through the abandoned property on the farm, they have found a old German Bible that belonged to said to have belonged to John Jr. or John Sr. based on the inscription in the Bible. But it was John Jr. who is often seen in possession of the Bible and 
people actually called John Jr. the Bible reader, right? Interesting. So the inscription in the Bible is really when they translated it to English was just like John Bender, born 1848, yada, 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 different names of family members that I was able not to um, track down. But what I think the Bible really is, is I think it's a trophy from a murder, Mm. probably committed by John Jr. Because he was the one that held the Bible close to him. And I think John Sr. just was a better fit for the age reign given in the Bible. And that's how the family adopted the name the Bender family. So John Sr. took the identity of the owner of the Bible, who was probably killed by John Jr. and presumably his family as well. Whoa, 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 whoa. Huh. So what you're saying is what? that John Bender, the man whose name is inscribed in this Bible, was a victim of these people. That's what I really, truly believe. And their name isn't Bender at all. No, they're not related. Their name isn't Bender. Wow. And they have this Bible that is a trophy. You know how serial killers have trophies? Yeah, no, I totally get it. So then who's the who's the voiceless? It would be the real John Bender. His name is all is like a legend to be associated with these people that killed him. Oh. And not in the right way. He's not looked at as a victor, the victim. He's looked at as the the vic, the murderous monster. Wow. And all of those every website, the bloody benders. The articles yes. from the time and even modern day. Yes. And tell me, oh, even the, the current land. Yes. Tell me about that. Tell me about the current land. So where the property, which is now destroyed, there is a historical marker there naming the Bender family as the murders. And still on the land today, there are mounds similar to Native American burial mounds where unclaimed victims of the so-called Bender family still lie. Oh, my gosh. So the Bender mounds, were we there, Jill, when we were driving? (laughs) You're going to absolutely kill me. So, uh, funny story, you wanted me to go east, and we just, I couldn't, because we were really running out of time. Because we you needed swimsuit like, cover-ups, right. And you were like, I feel a cult, and I feel it over here, and I'm like, oh, that's so cool. Let's okay. go to TJ's. Da, 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 da. So, no, we didn't actually make it there, because we had to get to Topeka. So, but it was east. If I would have followed, it was east. It if was I would have followed your directions, wow. I would we would have been there and of course i was picking up on the osage trail which this family and i i I use the word family now loosely because we don't believe that they were a true family but this group of people who assumed the name benders lived their their inn was on the great osage trail and they they took advantage of the travelers along that trail to commit their murderous deeds oh my gosh that's absolutely right your hits Oh, my hits. I mean, they're so self-explanatory. The body in the well. Oh. Evil in Kansas. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Serial killer. The stabbing, oh. the slitting the throat, multiple, multiple people, people missing. missing. Yeah, I mean, I'm convinced. This was a strong one. And I totally agree with you now in hindsight that, yes, I should have went east, and B, <laughs> it was not the serial killer from modern-day Wichita. I, I'm with you on that. You were right. Well, I was wrong. Thank you. And I, But I am glad we had swimsuit cover-ups. Yeah, for sure. For sure. (laughs) All right, Jill, tell the people where they can find us. Well, find us on our website, commonmystics.net. Check us out on our Facebook and Insta page, Common Mystics Podcast. Listen in on Audible, Amazon, TuneIn, TuneIn, Stitcher, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Apple Podcasts, where you can leave us a positive review so other people can find us. Good night. Good night, and thank you, India. Thank you.